This is Calculus 2 in 5 minutes, with many thanks to Dr. Bernhardt for an enjoyable Calculus 2 experience. So, step 1, terminology in polynomials. So what exactly is a polynomial? A polynomial is a function that can be represented using only arithmetic and x raised to the power of a positive integer. And here are some examples of valid and invalid polynomials. You'll see that all of them are just x raised to a positive integer. And there may be certain algebraic equations that are not exactly polynomials, but are algebraic. And there are special functions called transcendental functions that are even more special because they transcend algebra, and here are some examples. Now, the question is, how do computers calculate these transcendental functions? Chapter 2, Maclaurin series and approximation. So we've probably heard of the sine function, but how do we estimate a sine function using only polynomials? Enter the Maclaurin series. The Maclaurin series works by raising x to the 0th power over 0 factorial and f to the 0th derivative, and then adding f to the 1st degree derivative times x to the 1st power over 1 factorial, plus f to the 2nd degree derivative times x squared over 2 factorials. You get the idea. It will just continue raising each degree of the derivative times x raised to that power over that same value factorial. And here's that approximation in action. And you're noticing that there are a few zeros that will appear, such as this one. Because of those zeros, from now on, I'm going to be jumping and increasing the term, and increasing the 3 by 2 every single term. So the terms will increase much faster than, now, uh, than previously, because there are no zeros. Uh, so, with the omitting of the zeros, we can now start to see the function emerge. Now you'll notice that with each term added, x is increasing by 2. And it also starts off at 1, in terms of the factorial, as well as the powers. So the power and the factorial is 2n plus 1. We're also noticing that negative 1 to the power of n will give us that alternating plus and minus. And now I want you to try to solve for the following equations. And now, pause the video, memorize this, and write this down, because this is important. Chapter 3, Special Integrals. So, are all functions integratable? So, I want you to now integrate the following, cosine x squared dx, and you'll quickly realize that this is impossible. But, well, sort of. Because you can probably see where I'm headed with this. I want you to recall the Taylor series for f of x of cosine of x. If you replace x with x squared, simplify it, and then add 1, because that's how you take an integral of something, and divide by that new power, and also don't forget your plus c, you have the integral. So this is how you do it. So write down the following, because uh, it's important as well, and now I want you to go ahead and try to solve for the following. Did you get this? If so, you're correct. Let's move on. This is chapter 4, Converging versus Divergence. So on the topic of summations, we're going to learn to solve some summations. And these summations go to infinity. So let's rewrite the summation in this format. We'll quickly see the association between some of the variables. And notice how r is between negative 1 and 1. That will converge. So now I'll solve for this. And again, we're going to write it in the same format. And because 3 is outside of the range of negative 1 and 1, we know that this function will diverge. And lastly, let's go and find the sum. Um, so let's go and bring up this problem and rewrite it in the following format. Now let's go ahead and try this one. So this one's quite indecisive, because we actually don't have an answer for it. Converge means to equate to a finite sum, one and only one finite sum. So now we're going to talk about interval of convergence. The Maclaurin series for the approximation equates to the following. And now we're going to ask, can the Maclaurin series approximate everything? The answer, as you will see, is sadly no. You should be able to simplify this by now, and notice that r is the placeholder for x. So that means that when x meets the following criteria, the function converges. And if you graph it, 
it shows us so. What about the following? 2 over 4 plus 5x. Let's rewrite it in the following format. And if you write the Maclaurin approximation, and also graph it, you'll see that it also intersects at that point. And x will only satisfy the above constraint only when the following criteria is met. And lastly, ratio test. So sometimes you may need to solve the following. Now, how do we know if this converges or diverges? Well, you take n plus 1 over n. As you can see, we're going to cross out n factorial, and we're going to get that value. Plugging in infinity will give you 1 over infinity, which will yield a 0. And because r is 0, it will converge.